Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about setting up and installing Proxmox on your server, computer, or virtual system using one of these. Now there are a few reasons why I'm using Proxmox. I used to be running on VMware ESXi with vSphere. However, with my current hardware, there were some limitations that I had, and I didn't want to do any workarounds to get higher versions of ESXi supported on my server. So let's jump right into setting up Proxmox. So if you navigate to proxmox.com slash ian slash downloads, you'll be presented with a few options. Here is the virtual environment that we are interested in. Proxmox also has a free open source backup server that you can deploy to backup your systems. However, Proxmox virtual environment already has backups built into it. Now there are reasons why you would use backup server so we're gonna download Proxmox Virtual Environment 8.0. You're just gonna hit download. And once that's downloaded, you're gonna use your favorite USB ISO writer, whether that's Rufus or Belena. In my case, I'm gonna use Rufus. So if we plug in our USB device and select the ISO we just downloaded, this is gonna give you a warning, which you can just hit okay on. Once you're done with that, hit start and you've got your USB device. Now, once you have your USB device ready to go, find your server or computer that you're turning into a server and plug it in. The next thing you're gonna need to do is reboot that system and boot to the USB drive. I'm not gonna go over that, but there's plenty of resources out there that will help you through that process. Now, because I already have Proxmox installed on my server, and I do not have an iDRAC that I can show you in a video of how to set this up. I'm just going to deploy this into a nested Proxmox VM. If that doesn't make sense to any of you, just ignore the fact that I'm doing it this way. Plug your USB device into your server and boot up with that USB device. So I'm just going to start my VM. The process of setting this up is the exact same. You're going to see this exact screen and you're going to go through and you're going to use the graphical install. You're going to let this run. It's going to go through all of the checks that it needs to do and then it will prompt you with setting up your Proxmox. So as you can see now, as you can see now, it's using DHCP to get an IP address and that's fine. And that's going to be how this works. However, we can set that up to a static later. You're going to hit I agree to the EULA. And then you're going to select your install disk. Depending on your server, you may see multiple of these. So for my example, on my R710, I have two, two RAID arrays configured because I have four disks that are a different size and four disks that are another size. So I've created two arrays with four disks in there. So that's up to you where you would like to install this Proxmox. Again, if you need help setting up arrays for RAID, maybe I'll do a video about that in the future. So I'm gonna select this 32 gig hard drive. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna select my time zone, hit next. And then I'm gonna put in my password. I'm gonna put in my email address and hit next. Now you can see the IP address that it pulled through DHCP. I'm just gonna leave that and then my host name I will actually have to change because I am using PVE as my primary. DNS servers look great and we're just gonna hit install. Now this is gonna run through installing Proxmox on the partition you selected. Once this is completed, you'll remove your USB and reboot the device. It did boot up for us. So you'll be presented with this IP address that you can navigate to in a new window. So let's navigate to that window. 
8006 and let's throw ahead and throw the HTTPS tag on there. Okay, you can see that our PVE2 virtual environment is set up. You're gonna use root and then the password you set up for this to log in. Perfect, you have set up Proxmox. Now we're gonna do a couple of post install scripts that's going to get rid of this Novala subscription pop-up and we're gonna connect you to the repo for getting updates for developer versions. That way you don't have to pay for a subscription to get updates. So if you navigate to this website, there's a couple of helper scripts in here. And if we expand Proxmox VE, we'll see a post install. And within this post install, it's gonna do the following. It's going to set up your repositories. It's gonna disable the enterprise repository because we don't wanna pay for a subscription. It's gonna add or correct the PVE sources for the repos, enable the no sub repo, adding the test repo, disabling the subscription nag, which is what we saw when we logged in, and updating Proxmox VE. So if we just copy this bash command, we go back into our Proxmox environment, you're gonna click on the node or the host and then you're gonna go into shell. Now you should be at a shell prompt to where you can right click and paste. And when you hit enter, you'll be presented with this awesome screen. Great job on the script. And we're gonna hit Y, enter to start the script. Okay, it's gonna ask us, do we want the correct sources? Yes. Do we wanna disable enterprise? Yes. Enable no sub repo? Yes. Enable Ceph package repo? Now, I won't be using Ceph, but that's up to you. We can just say yes to keep it updated. Add disabled PVE test repo, yes, yes, and then hit OK. Do you want to disable high availability? Will this only be a single node or will you bring more servers into play? Now this can be re-enabled later, but to improve performance, we can disable that. So once you're done with all of the prompts, you'll see that this post install will actually go through all the processes that you've set up and disable and add what's needed. It's also gonna ask if we wanna update Proxmox and we'll just say yes. So now we'll wait for this post install to finish. One thing to note is if you leave the shell window, it will not resume your session from when you go back into shell. So just as a tip, anytime you're doing something inside of shell, just keep, just keep that open so that you don't lose your progress. Okay, so when it's finished, it's going to ask you if you'd like to reboot, and we're just gonna say yes. Just say welcome to Grub, and we're back at our screen. So I'm gonna close that. We're gonna go back here and refresh this, and we're logged in because it's cached. Once you see the green check mark, all is well. Now I'm gonna jump back over to my environment to show you how I have it set up on my host. Because the next thing you will need to do is make sure your network is configured and create a storage volume so that you can store virtual machines. So for my host, my network configuration, I have two NIC cards or two network interface cards. One is a four port gig NIC and the other is a two port gig NIC. And you'll see that ENO one through four, that's my four port. And you'll see the ENP5S 0F0 and 0F1, that is my two port. Now I'm not utilizing these currently, but to explain a little bit better, I have set up a bond for port one and two with a balance mode of ALB, and you assign that bond zero into your bridge with an IP address. Now for three and four, I am using for NFS connections. So I've created a bond one with the same balance ALB, and I've assigned bond one to a bridge one with the IP address 10.0.70.3. This ensures that my NFS traffic is going through a separate VLAN and separate ports. Now ignore the iSCSI here, because this was iSCSI, but I have changed it over to NFS. And notice I don't have it VLAN aware because those interfaces on my switch are assigned to VLAN 70 
only. So once you have your networking set up, and it may not be this difficult for you, you may be set up just fine with the default bridge that was created. And if that's the way you want it to be, you don't need to touch network at all. The next thing you have to do is create your storage. So if we go to disks, mine are a bit different because remember I said I had two arrays. This is the array that I installed the OS onto, and this is an array that I created a ZFS volume on. If you have any data on those disks that you want to create the volume on, you will need to wipe the disk. Once you have wiped those disks, you can go into ZFS and hit Create ZFS you will see the disks that are not used that you can select and then you can create your storage from here. Now, my RAID is handled by the system itself because I'm running a Dell R710. So it turned out to be a single disk and I didn't set up RAID on Proxmox. RAID was actually set up on the host itself. So if yours shows up as a single disk, you will just select a single disk. There are articles out there that you can read depending on which RAID level you would like. But for my case, and if we just look at this one, it was a single disk. Once your ZFS is created, you can go into data center, storage, and then add. And let me just pull up the ZFS I created. So we would click storage here and you're going to select the options for the content you would like and the nodes that you would like to access this storage. Now that you have completed that, you have a Proxmox cluster set up and ready to go. I'll do a video later on setting up NFS using my Buffalo Terra station so that you can utilize a different storage device to run your VMs from. I also use NFS to store my backups ISO images, and containers. I hope you enjoyed this fast and simple Proxmox setup. If you have any issues or questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will get to those to help you out. If there is anything else that you'd like to see a video on, please just do the same. Thank you guys for watching, and have an awesome day.